So for today's portion, we will read from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 1 to 8. And I will request to project all verses from NASB. Okay. For we know that if the earthly tent, which is our house, is torn down, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in heavens. For indeed, in this house we groan, longing to be clothed with our dwelling from heaven, inasmuch as we, having put it on, will not be found naked. For indeed, while we are in this tent, we groan, being burdened, because we do not want to be unclothed, but to be clothed, so that what is mortal will be swallowed up by life. Now he who prepared us for this very purpose is God, who gave us the Spirit as a pledge. Therefore, being always of good courage and knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. For we are of good courage, I say, and prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, Almighty God, thank and praise you for your faithfulness, giving us the privilege to sing song and prepare our hearts. Yes, Lord, we need you. You are more than what the world can give, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the privilege you have given us to study from 2 Corinthians. And you helped us to complete till chapter 4. Now, as we study from chapter 5, deep mysteries have been given by Paul. So give me grace, Lord, whatever thy Holy Spirit leads me, I may be able to minister, first of all, for your glory and for the edification of every one of them. So touch my tongue, my mouth. So Lord, you may be glorified, words may be uttered by you. And all may understand the word of God before we go home. So we commit ourselves into your hand. Bless thy word. In the precious, most worthy name of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So here, the title which I have given for these eight verses, I will go for the PowerPoint later on, but I will be going on and off this time. So if you want, you can write down the titles if you want to, but you will still be able to see it later on. So the title for this eight verses, Facing Death Confidently. Facing Death Confidently. Now this portion, most of the time, is being read during the time of funeral. Encouraging or strengthening the relatives of the deceased one. And, and showing them what happens to the one who is deceased and how that person is with the Lord. So we are going to come here today and we'll try to meditate on these eight verses. But most probably the last verse eight, I will not complete because I want to put it for the next week because then also after two verses there is the judgment seat of Christ and I want to put it together and also I want to bring some charts so most of them I believe you may not even understand or have understood uh, what happens you know after death and uh, I know Brother Joel Christian knows about it, but many of them, I believe, will not be able to, or never even have understood that or thought of it, what happens. So with the chart, uh, we will be able to find out what happens 
and what happens of the judgment seat of Christ also. So here we see why Paul is writing this because he was facing death on everyday basis. Hostility swirled around him. Animosity was constant. And so was the reality and threat of opposition and terminal persecution. Paul suffered a lot all the way even to the death. And we see that in uh, we see Second Corinthians 1, 8, 10, we will see that later. Both the both un unbelieving Jews and the Gentiles sought to take his life. He was always in danger of his life. And they thought that they were in danger because of their religion, because he was teaching Lord Jesus Christ. To the Jewish people, it was a very dangerous thing for them. Because many Jewish people were accepting Lord Jesus Christ through the preaching of Paul, and they didn't like that. And also they were having thought that their economic prosperity also is going to be involved in it. And even the political stability because of Paul's preaching. And his life was in constant danger. And that's why Apostle's sense of imminent death comes through repeatedly. See in 2 Corinthians, you can project that in NASB, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 to 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 8 to 10. For we do not want you to be unaware, brethren, for our affliction which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened excessively beyond our strength, so that we despaired even of life. See, I, I, I was not sure that I would live. Indeed, we had the sentence of death within ourselves, so that we would not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead who delivered us from so great a peril of death and will deliver us. He on whom we set our hope and he will yet deliver. So here, constant death threat was there for Paul. And because he faced death confidently, he wrote in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 8, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 8, he says, we, uh, he says, I would rather be absent from the body to be present with the Lord. He wanted to face death. And he says, I know to be absent from the body is to be present. Then in Philippians chapter 1, verse 21 and 23. Philippians 1, 21 and 23. He says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Again, he's thinking about death to die is gain. In verse 23, but I am hard pressed from both direction, having the desire to be depart and to be with the Christ, for that is very much better. He was totally confident and that's why he is writing even to the Philippian believer, to the Corinthian believer. And this portion which we have read 2 Corinthians 5 verses 1 to 5, that is built up on the earlier section on chapter 4, verse 16, 17, 18. From that he continues and he builds the truth. And Paul revealed in chapter 4, 16, 17, and 18, which we saw last time. Because he writes there that he does not lose his heart. No matter what problems come in his life, no matter what threatening of his life is there, he says, I don't lose my heart. And he knew that the outer man is decaying, but the inner man is renewed day by day. That was his confidence. And he understood also that the momentary light affliction is producing an eternal weight of glory, far beyond all comparison. And he was saying, I, we don't look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. We are looking for the things which are not seen, and those which are seen are temporal things. But the things which we don't see is eternal. You know, it's a, I think, a believer in Corinth. I think Paul gave there too many things. What happens after that? Our brother uh, uh, 
gave the Bible study on 1 Corinthians and when we came to 15th chapter and he took a long time to um, preach on that on the, or teach on that and in detail he showed us. Now think about it, Corinthian believer, how much detail they knew about what happens after that. But when he comes to chapter 5, that is not covered in 1 Corinthians 15, he covers here more, he gives more detail. And I, I believe a Corinthian believer must should be a great believers, strong believers. But we know that how lot of problems were there in that church. Many times we know so many things of the Lord Jesus Christ. We also know what's going to happen after that. But how much we live in this world, self-life, worldly life. We are like the believers at Corinth. But Paul gave much, much detail, you know. So he gladly suffered in this world for a far greater reward in the world that is to come. He was always looking for that reward. But he did not work for the reward. He loved the Lord Jesus Christ. That was his, you know, we have to love Lord Jesus Christ. I don't do this because, oh, I will get something out of it, you know. I still remember, you know, when we used to go for prayer meeting, we used to go Rockland. And we were living in Brooklyn. And I know those who lived in Brooklyn, how parking is very difficult, right? And we thought, you know, oh, we are going for the Lord's work all the way to Rockland and we are going to have prayer meeting or something and we come back because we are going for the Lord's work. You know, the Lord will, when we come back at night time, parking will be ready for us, you know. We don't think of that, oh, because we do Lord's work, something is going, Lord is going to do for us. No, we do something for the Lord because we love him, because what he did for us. That's why we have to do it. And that's what Paul was doing. He was not doing because he, but he knew he will get reward. So we see four motives of facing death. Four motives of facing death. Now I'm going to go on my PowerPoint if you give me to share. And uh, I will go back and forth, you know. Where is the share? Let me see. Okay. Can you give me the share? Okay, can you see that? Are you able to see? Can somebody tell me? Yes, sir. Okay, you can see, right? Okay, yes, because I can, can see. see. You can see the PowerPoint? Yeah. Okay, all right, that's good then. Let me... And uh, okay. Now, as I told you, this is the title Facing Death Confidently. So that's the title I gave. And we I'm going to see there are four motives for facing death. Through these eight verses, we are going to see four motives for facing death. And that is for all of us, you know. You know. When we were young, we did not, <laughs> uh, we were not afraid of death or we never thought of facing death, you know. But as I'm approaching <laughs> 70s and above and those who are already there, we know that this is going to be very near future for us. But we thank the Lord that we know what is going to happen, you know. But this facing death, nobody is sure when it's going to happen. We may be young, we may be old or middle, we don't know. But we have to have a great joy to know what are, what do we face that? What are the four motives, you know? First motive we are going to see is that the next body is the best. Next body is the best. And now I'm going to just stop sharing. And then I will go from there again. I will come back again to you. So first motive is the next body is the best. And verse 1, you can project that verse, chapter 5 or verse 1, says, For we know that if the earthly tent, which is our house, is torn down, we have a building from God, 
a house not made with hands eternal in heaven so next body is the best why because a house eternal not made with hands eternal in heaven so that's the next body is the best body not this body <clears throat> so here apostle whose physical body had been mercilessly battered by the effects of fall hardship illness rigor of life and persecution that he longed for incorruptible immortal and resurrection body that's what he wanted then he says for we know just project that uh, verse so we can just uh, from that verse we can see for we know <coughs> for we know how much confident you know he is writing for we know that means he, he was absolutely sure about it you know he had full confident in what he was writing we know i hope we can also say like paul we know so paul says we know this indicates that believers glorified bodies are not a remote possibility or vague wish no it's not a remote possibility or vague no they are a fixed reality what is going to happen eternal in heaven that's the glorified bodies they are a reality a settled fact based on the promises of god see romans 8 verse 18 that is the promise of god the lord has given us a fixed reality for i consider that suffering of this present time is nothing is not worthy to be compared with what the glory that is to be revealed to us is looking at the future he is absolutely confident we know and then in verse 23 8:23 and not only this but also we ourselves having the first fruit of the spirit even we ourselves groan within ourselves see then mark that word groan also we will see it is it will come later on in this verses which we have written groan within ourselves why waiting eagerly for our adoption as son the redemption of our body how wonderfully all knew very well confidently what's going to happen with this body and what we are going to get so the next body he knew that it's the best body right and also philippians chapter 3 in verse 21 philippians chapter 3 in verse 21 who will transform the body of our humble state into conformity with the body of his glory see he is going to body of his glory by the exertion power that is even subject to all things to himself body of his glory so paul was very confident about it you know now let's go to second corinthians chapter 5 verse 1 second corinthians 5 verse 1 now mark this word if for we know that if okay now paul wrote if he did not write when okay mark that word if if this earthly tent paul is saying if if it happens to me or to all of us who are with him if this earthly tent is torn down if but not he says when this is torn down this is what he have he says if it is going to happen what does it mean you know paul he did not want to die he wanted to be raptured and he eagerly waited if this earthly tent will remain if if not when so he wanted he knew he thought that during his time there will be rapture and he knew that he wanted to be raptured because he will be get a glorified body and that's why he says if the earthly tent which is our house is torn so he though he was ready to die he did not see his death as inevitable or unavoidable he viewed the return of lord jesus christ as imminent and believed it was possible for him to live until the lord comes or the lord returns and that was his deepest desire <coughs> and there are many passages which we see about the rapture and we see few of them first corinthians 15 verse 51 
1 Corinthians 15 verse 51. We already saw as our brother taught us, he says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. Right? I, I tell you a mystery. Then what he says? We will not all sleep. <laughs> Who is we? Paul says, I am included. We will not sleep. I'm not going to die. I'm going to show you a mystery. We will all not sleep, but we will. We will all be changed. Paul was waiting for the rapture. And you know, today also, <laughs> yeah, it is great joy because uh, my wife, <laughs> she always says, I don't want to die. I want to be raptured. <laughs> and we all have that desire that, Lord, I wish we can all be raptured. And isn't it? Uh, world is going. We will see how the world is becoming bad and bad and bad, full of sin. And we always think, Lord, please come. How long you are going to wait, Lord, you know? And Paul said, we will all change. See 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 15 to 17. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 15 to 17. I have it here, but I will read from <clears throat> uh, 15. For this we say, okay, to you by the word of the Lord, that we again, see, mark that word, we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord. See, he says, we are going to remain alive until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. So he is including himself in V, verse 16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an arch archangel, and with the trumpet, and the dead in Christ will rise first. And he is saying, we, verse 17. Then we again, see, his put in, we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so again, we shall always be with the Lord. How wonderful he, he had desired to be raptured. Now, he then he said, suppose in case, if I do not leave till the rapture, then Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8, 2 Corinthians Chapter 5, verse 8. The last part, he says, rather to be absent from the body and to be present from the Lord. Then he says, if it doesn't happen, but I want to be raptured. But if it doesn't happen, I would rather be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. And same thought he gave it to the Philippian believer in Philippians chapter 1, verse 23. Philippians chapter 1, verse 23. But I am hard pressed from both directions, either to stay here or to depart. See, what direction, both direction? Having the desire to depart. That's the one direction. And what is the other direction? To be with the Christ. For that is very much better. So he says that to be with Christ is very much better. So he's telling to the believer also. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. Then we saw we know, and if we saw also that if this earthly tent then earthly tent, which is our house, is torn down. Let me tell you something about that. It refers to, torn down, refers to death of the believer. Now, Paul was a tent maker. I don't want to go into all that, but Acts chapter 18 and 3, we know already, we have read that. He was a tent maker. Don't go on that verse. So, Paul chose an analogy of an earthly tent because he was a tent maker. You know, tent can be folded down. So he says that our body is like a tent, you know, and he says that that body is a physical body like a tent. And he described the soul's temporary house. Our body is the soul's temporary house. Our soul resides in our physical body. That's we are our own. And that also, Peter also said that 2 Peter chapter 1, 13 and 14, we will go back to this verse. You can project 2 Peter chapter 1, 13 and 14. Peter also says, I consider it right as long as I am in this earthly dwelling. Dwelling, right? To stir you up by the reminder, knowing that the laying aside of this earthly dwelling is imminent, as also our Lord Jesus Christ has Hold, you know. So here he says he was earthly dwelling. He's also in another translation. He says that I'm in a tent. Tent. He's also using that word tent. 
and the tent is a metaphor for human body which is a temporary home for the eternal our soul is eternal but it is resides in this temporary body which is our physical body but but it will go this soul will go to heaven for those who have been born again see philippians chapter 3 verse 20 philippians chapter 3 verse 20 for our citizenship is in heaven we are not earthly people our citizen is in heaven from which we also eagerly wait for our savior lord jesus christ he says that our soul belongs here our this body is a temporary dwelling place for the soul it's like a tent any time it will be folded but this is the place where we are going to go and in hebrews 11 and 13 it reminds that we are just a pilgrim see hebrews 11 and 13 all this died in faith or that we don't want to go into all that detail heroes of faith without receiving the promises but having seen them and having welcomed them from a distance and having confessed that they were just strangers and exiles or pilgrim on the earth this is our way we have to leave you know because we are going to go anyway one day how are we going to face death are we going to face this confidently and our next body is the best so let's go to first Corinthians, second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1 so it says that earthly tent right now this reminds us also a tabernacle which was built by Moses in the tabern in the wilderness so just as the tabernacle of Israel were wandering in the wilderness it was replaced at the end by Solomon's temple there was no more tabernacle it was a permanent rebuilding when Israel entered the promised land so the temporary tent in which believer now dwell will be replaced one day in heaven with an eternal imperishable body see first Corinthians 1542 though we have already learned from it but we'll go through these two three verses you know first Corinthians 1542 42 so also is the resurrection of the dead it is sown perishable body and it is raised an imperishable body so our body is from heaven and 53 and 54 for this perishable must put on imperishable and this mortal must put on immortality verse 54 but when this perishable will have put on imperishable and this mortal will put on immortal then will come to that saying oh that is swallowed up in victory let's go to first current second corinthians 5 and verse 1 so after that dismantles believers earthly tent that means when we die we have a building from god see that was a tent temporary but now a building is a permanent structure and from God from God and that also not made with hands and eternal how wonderfully the word this this just read it with your whole heart and think what the Lord is going to do for us after our death a building from God not a tent which can be folded no and that tent can be folded but this building is eternal never to be folded and it is from God the creator of the heaven and the earth a house that is not made with hands so building suggests something which is of a strong solid foundation secured and permanent and it is replaced this physical body is being replaced by the glorified body in Romans 8 18 to 24 we don't want to go but they're also same it speaks of the redemption of the body it Paul talks about it everywhere Romans Philippians Thessalonian how wonderfully the revelation the Lord has given to him so the believers will not be afraid of death they know what's going to happen for them you know so Paul longed for his glorified body not primarily because he would be free from this all the problems he's going physically persecution suffering all that thing not because of that but because this tent of the body is the scene's home 
our sin is a home. This body is a home for the sin. He didn't like that. And believe me, the more as I grow in the Lord, this sin becomes a big problem to me and to all of us. And this Paul wanted to go with the Lord because he didn't want to face all this sinful thing. See, Paul said in 7.14, Romans 7.14, if you can project that, because a lot of verses are there, but it makes us clear understanding. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of flesh sold to the bondage of sin. He wanted to be with the Lord or raptured because of this problem in this physical body is this. And he wanted an eternal body from God in heaven, eternal, not made with hand because of this sin problem. And this is the greatest problem we all face. Then Romans 7 and 17. 7 and 17. So now no longer I am the one, but the sin which dwells in me is, is tired of sin. Verse 20. For if I am doing the very thing I do not want to do, I am no longer the one, but the sin again and again which dwells in me, which dwells in me, and I don't want this body, physical body. I want an eternal body. Verse 21. Evil is present with me. Evil is present with me in this physical body. And verse 24. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who will set me free from the body of death? Who will set me? Oh, Lord, set me free from the body of this death. I want to be in heaven. A building given from God, eternal in heaven, and not made with home. So, apostle longed to serve, worship, and praise God in absolutely purity, freed from the restriction of this fallen and sinful flesh. That was his desire. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1. Then we saw, we know, if the earthly tent is torn down, that, that is when we die, we have a building from heaven, mark that a house, not a house not made with hand. See Mark chapter 4, 14 and 58. Mark 14, 58. Okay. When the Lord Jesus Christ was on the trial, these were the false witnesses. They said, we heard him. What they heard? I will, the Lord says, he said, I will destroy this temple made with hands. And in three days, I will build another, mark that word, without hands. You see, Paul is saying, my, the building with the Lord is going is without hand. Right? He says, but they misunderstood those words. And they thought they're talking about another temple. He's talking about Herod's temple. But Lord was not talking about Herod's temple. And he cleared that up. John chapter 2 and verse 21. John made it very clear. He was speaking of the temple of his body. Not made with hand. That body which will be raised will be a glorified, resurrected body. Not made with hands. And that is what Paul knew, that we all believers, when this tent is torn down, we are going to get that body or a building not made with hand. And that is his resurrected body. And second, same thing in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 11. Colossians 2 and 11. What he says, For in him were you also circumcised with a circumcision, mark that word, made, Without hand in the removal of the body of flesh by the circumcision of Christ. That is not anything which has been done physically or made materially or made. No, it is without hand. God did it. He is going to give a body, a, a building or a, a body which is not made with hands, but made by Christ himself. But the most, very more def definitely, uh, one verse which stands out out of all that where it reminds made not with hand and that is in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 11 Hebrews 9 11 see but when Christ appeared as a high priest 
of the good things to come, he entered through the greater and more perfect tabernacle. He is talking about comparing the earthly tabernacle which we saw was in the wilderness. Now he is talking about a perfect tabernacle that is in heaven. And how this tabernacle is made? Not with hands. No, like Baziel and Aholia, not oh, they made it. But it is made not with hand. God said, let there be light and there was light. No hand was required, just he said one word. This is beyond our understanding. And mark that word, not made with hand. And then he clears up, what does it mean not made with, that to say, not of this creation. That means the body which is not made with hand, it is not of this creation. It is of that creation which is in heaven. What a wonderful way we can get encouragement from the Lord. Not made with hands. It refers to what is spiritual, transcendent and eternal. While made in hands is earthly, physical and temporary. Made with hands all is temporary. But eternal is not made with hands. So here we finish verse 1, verse 1. Now let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 2 to 4. You can put it together if you can. 2 to 4, you can, if you can put it together. Okay. For indeed, in this house, I think it's already 5, 655. I don't know how much I'm going to go. But the second one, uh, which uh, uh, let me just go to the screen sharing, please, for a minute. And uh, I will come back again to this. Please give me the sharing of the screen. Okay. I... So we saw the next body is the best, right? Why best? It is not earthly. It is permanent building. What is in heaven? Made by God without hands. Eternal. So next body is the best. What is the second one from verse 2 to 4? The next body is perfect. The next body is perfect. Uh, looks like I will not be able to come, but I'm going to just stop the sharing here because you already know the next body is perfect. So I'm going to stop sharing. And then we, let's go back to that verse which we projected, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 to 4, right. So in this word, you see two times for indeed, verse 4, for indeed, two times. He is writing the word indeed. So twice repeated phrase for indeed expressed Paul's intense longing for heaven and certainty that he would one day enter into his glory. Twice he is writing. He knew it and he is writing it twice to confirm it. Any time which is written verily, verily, we know it has a something strong emphasis on it, you know. And that's why for indeed, for indeed, two times it has been written. But in the meantime, all believers in this house, we groan. In this house, we groan, right? Why? Longing to be clothed with our dwelling from heaven. So those who love the Lord Jesus Christ, earn, yearn for the next life. You know, we all, yeah, we, I, we, I believe we all, most of us are tired with this coronavirus going on and cannot go out and even after almost two years, we still put a mask and we have to go. We are tired of it. Many of the God servants say, oh Lord, how long we are going to go through this, you know? Why don't you come? So we grow. We grow longing to be clothed with our dwelling from heaven that we saw in verse 1. That's an eternal building, not made with hands. So when this in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 54, I will just try to finish this part and then maybe 1 Corinthians 15, 54. But when this perishable will put a have put imperishable, this mortal he will put a mortal will put an immortality, then will come about to say that is swallowed up in victory. We are always thinking about that, you know. We are always longing, we always groan, oh Lord, this is perishable, Lord, this is this is mortal. We want imperishable and we want which is immortal. The apostle passionately longed to be clothed 
let's go to again uh, uh, same thing second Corinthians 5 2 to 4 right the apostle passionately longed to be clothed with his dwelling from heaven so Paul again is mixing building and clothing together you know same thing it doesn't mean any different it refers to the resurrection body it, it, and the perfect of eternal life in verse 3 he says in as much as we so that you also if you see in verse 2 also for indeed in as much as we have put it on we will be not found naked we will be not found naked and that is true he says he will put on the new body and he will not be found naked once we leave this body we will not be found naked you know we will go into heaven with the lord but that body is not just soul without em embodiment it's there is such is covering right now our body is covering our soul but when we die the body goes to the earth but what about the soul it's not just by itself naked no he says we will not be found naked he knows there is something for him in the heaven he means to be only soul without resurrection body he says no no it's not without naked means that it will be soul without resurrection body no he reminded the Corinthian that when this earthly tent which if it is dismantled by death when we die it is dismantled he would not ever exist as a naked embodied spirit many of them think that once we die only the spirit goes up there is nothing covering for that no 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 we will see in very detail as we go to verse 8 and 9 uh, very wonderfully the uh, paul is bringing about that he says that we are not like an m m disembodied spirit disembodiment there is nothing covering for the spirit you know he was not looking for the release from his body but for the perfection of his resurrection body of his resurrection body so passionate was his longing that Paul desire was to experience the rapture as I said he wanted rapture whereby his body will be raptured and this body will be a resurrected body so when living believers physically transform into the glorious body that we know about it he knew that if he died before rapture he knew that if he died before rapture he would have to wait till he gets the glorified body now i will go into detail very much but one thing remember when a believer dies he is absent from the body but present with the lord okay but he is not raptured yet the resurrected body is not given yet so there is a law it's a span of time between us after dying and going to heaven and receiving the resurrected body that is a difference there and Paul said I would rather have a resurrected body than go up than having there is something but we will come again to that later on but raptured means a glorious body is much more different than than other thing you know than the reg regular body which we have now or even when we will go to the heaven when we die so and that's why he says in 1st Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16 let me complete this part otherwise for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet and dead in Christ will rise first so he wanted rapture rather than dying and to be absent for the body and be present with the Lord even though it's not it if we go to the heaven what who whatever we will be there I mean we will say later on much more glorious than what we are having it right now but a raptured body is much more then what we will be having right now after a person dies that body is beyond beyond any understanding and that Paul knew it and he knew from the life of Christ which we will see little later on so here he says the saints in heaven are waiting for the resurrected body saints who have already gone in heaven they are waiting for the resurrected body which is why the Hebrew in uh, chapter 12 and verse 20 he says spirit of the righteous made perfect are there spirit we can put that verse maybe we can see that Hebrews 12 13 and I'm going to do it little quiet the, and make straight path for your feet so that what is that 23 sorry 
Okay, so to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. See, these are all enrolled in heaven. And to God and the judge of all. And to the what? To the spirit of the righteous made perfect. These are the ones who are there, righteous made perfect. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5, 2 to 4. I'm just going to close in a few minutes, okay? In verse 4, it says, For indeed while we are in this, and that is in this physical body, we groan. Again, we groan, we groan. Everybody who are strong believers, we always groan. Oh Lord, this body is sinful. I don't want this body. Lord, I want the raptured body, the body which you are going at the time of rapture. So, he says, for we indeed groan, being burdened, being burdened, being burdened, because we do not want to be unclothed, but to be clothed. He says, it's not that I don't want to die and unclothed in this physical body. That's not that it's already there, but I want to be clothed with the body which you are going to give. Yes. And that's why in Romans 8.23, also Paul reminds Romans 8.23. And not only this, but we also ourselves having the first fruit of the Spirit, we ourselves have grown within ourselves. Why? Why are we growing within ourselves? Waiting eagerly. See, eagerly. Paul says we are waiting eagerly, not a cause value. No, no, eagerly. Why? For what? Adoption of sons and and the redemption of our body. Yes, redemption of body. And what was the reason for that? Because of the burden of sin which, he, which we saw in so many verses, because of that, and the, op, the problems he is going through his physical life. He was thinking, Lord, I would rather have a raptured body. After the rapture, when we have that body, which is a glorious body, Lord, I want that. And that's why Paul says, we do not want to be unclothed or have a disembodied body. We don't want that, Lord. But we want to be bored. We want to be unclothed. That means not to have any body covering the spirit or soul. But we want to be clothed with that glorious body which you are going to give during the time of rapture. That's what we want to know. And then let's go to the last second. The last time I'm to go to Second Corinthians five two to verse. And it says, so that the mortal will be swallowed up of life. The fullness and the perfection of eternal life. And believers will be like their risen Lord. See, swallowed up by life, eternal life. Like John says in 1 John 3, 2, this is the last verse. Then I'll stop over here. 1 John 3, 2. Beloved, we are the children of God. And it is... It has not appeared as yet what we will be. Again, we know. See the confidence. Paul also says we know. John also says we know that when he appears, John had, had written Revelation. He was in heaven. He says we know that when he appears, we, we, see, we, we, we will be like him because we will see him just as he is. We will be like him. That was what Paul's desire was there. To be clothed with the glorified body. So we saw facing death confidently and four motives for facing death. First was the next body which is the best because we know it is not made with hands, right? And the next, next life is perfect life. Very perfect, you know, with the heavenly raptured body, glorified body we can. So may the Lord speak with us. It was very difficult for me to prepare this message because it is, <laughs> Paul is showing something which is beyond what we see. And Paul says, I really rejoice because things which are unseen, I see that is the faith. And what a great joy it is. The joy we should have, the Lord is already showing us what happens to a believer after death? Many of them have no confidence. They don't know what's going to happen. Hindus believe that there is reincarnation. They will die. They will become maybe frog or cockroach or whatever. We don't know. And then Muslims also don't believe that they will get a body. No religion speaks 
that they will get the body back a glorified body no religion except jesus christ in the new testament christianity it is talking about this is the greatest joy we all will have that body this body is of clay it's going to go away and we really i regret to be in this body because it's a sinful body it hurts me and i believe in the time to come if the lord there is will be raptured if not we still know that we are going to be with him with a glorified body may the lord speak with us we will go into more detail and i don't know whether he'll be able to complete this section but i want to go with the charts to show you what happens after death and more things you will come to know about it you know so maybe you can take over